Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a very exciting study and a potential confirmation of the existence of the third type of supernova. The supernova type that was originally predicted back in the 1980s and it looks like after about four decades of research we might have actually found one very recently. We might have finally discovered at least one star that fits perfectly into what we would call a type 3 supernova. A star whose explosion was originally discovered back in 2018. And so let's talk a little bit more about this because this might potentially also solve a mystery of another very famous supernova that created the famous Crab Nebula. So first of all, when we actually think of supernova, at least um, symbolically speaking, including this video that I showed you in the beginning, that's what we refer to as the type 2 supernova. This is when a relatively old star, and usually also a pretty massive star, can no longer sustain um, itself from collapsing. And once the collapse begins, the core transforms into a neutron star or a black hole, and the outer material explodes with some of the neutrinos from the formation of the neutron star or a black hole, also causing the material to expand much faster than originally. And also depending on what kind of emissions the supernova produces, we can generally subclassify the type 2 supernova under different types as well. But because the universe is close to 14 billion years old and because these massive stars are not as common anymore, type 2 supernova are also much less common as well. But then we also have this other type of supernova known as type 1 supernova, which to science at least is a little bit more useful, mostly because they generally produce the same amount of light and because they can be used as what's known as the distance candle. By looking at them in different galaxies, we can usually use the luminosity to figure out the distances to those galaxies by locating type 1a supernova inside of them. Their origin, however, is very different. They always start with some sort of a white dwarf. Typically in a binary system, usually a white dwarf has to have a partner, but in this case the white dwarf will always go supernova upon reaching a certain mass that we usually refer to as the Chandrasekhar limit. It's around 1.4 masses of the sun, and in this case you're about to see how once these two white dwarfs collide, they'll go supernova creating the emission that we refer to as the type 1a. Although sometimes the white dwarf will also get all of this extra mass by just stealing it from its partner. So there doesn't have to be two white dwarfs, but usually a partner is required. Although in some cases, the supernova have also been detected for some other mysterious reasons. I've discussed some of these in some of the previous videos. But the point here is that we have these two major types of supernova created through different means. But for decades, there was predicted to be a third type. And the type that sort of explains the differences between different stars. So for example, for type 1 supernova that you see right here, will always happen when a white dwarf becomes too massive, with generally stars that are slightly less massive than about 9 masses of the sun, which should be somewhere right here, being responsible for producing white dwarfs eventually. But some of the more massive stars, such as the B-type or the O-type stars, especially stars that are more than 10 masses of the sun, will pretty much always explode in type 2 supernova, with some minor exceptions. But here's the thing though, even in between these two types, so maybe between 8 to about 10 masses of the sun, there is a mass gap where at least one scientist from Japan expects another type of a supernova to potentially exist. This astronomer from Tokyo is not actually very well known, but his name is Kenichi Namoto. But back in the 80s, he proposed another mechanism for the supernova that can hypothetically occur in slightly larger stars that produce white dwarfs. Here, once the degenerate core containing oxygen, neon and magnesium is developed, and once the star starts transforming on the inside as it runs out of fuel, the extra mass from the outside starts to contract and starts to compress all of the electrons present on the surface of the core of this particular star. And what this ends up doing is pushing all of these electrons into the particles underneath and suddenly transforming the core into a neutron star just like with the larger stars. And a lot of the magnesium and neon that's present inside the core starts to suddenly capture all of these free-floating electrons around them. But since these electrons were actually preventing the star from collapsing, they were kind of creating a bit of an outward pressure, the sudden absorption of all of these electrons literally makes the star collapse. There's just not enough electrons to support the star anymore. And within mere seconds, all of this then results in an explosion. But this particular supernova is usually not as powerful as an actual type 2 supernova. At least that's what the theory has been telling us. 
But back in 2018, an amateur astronomer that also happens to be from Japan was exploring this particular region of night skies that was very close to this galaxy you see right here, the galaxy known as NGC 2146, and completely by accident, he was able to detect this very interesting supernova that you see right here. The supernova now known as SN 2018ZD. And after about three years of analysis and investigation, this particular paper was able to establish that this was indeed an official proof that Type 3 supernova exists. And so what do we know about this particular supernova right now? Well, first of all, this is at a distance of about maybe 30 to 40 million light years away from us. And because it was detected relatively recently, the scientists were able to use several telescopes, including Hubble and Spitzer telescopes, to discover what the supernova came from, the original progenitor star. Because of the distances, it's obviously not very easy to see, but it's this tiny, tiny pixel right here. The pixel that turned out to be what's known as the Super AGB star. Also known as the Super Asymptomatic Giant Branch star, which happens to fit perfectly in that mass gap I previously discussed. It was roughly around 8 to 10 masses of the Sun. But this was only one of six predictions that were originally made in regards to Type 3 supernova. They had to still discover five more of these signs. And just like predicted, they also were able to detect that the star was shedding a lot of mass prior to the explosion. It ended up releasing a tremendous amount of gas, creating a kind of a cloud around the star itself. Which was also one of the original predictions as well. The third prediction was in regards to chemical composition. Here, just as expected, there was a lot of helium, carbon, nitrogen, but only a little bit of oxygen. And this unique chemical composition was expected from a star that should be capturing electrons prior to its explosion. Then the next prediction was one of the more important ones. The explosion itself was supposed to be much weaker than type 2 supernova or type 1 supernova. Which is kind of what was discovered in this particular case as well. And even during the explosion, the light progressed just as expected. It stayed relatively bright for about 100 days. Mostly because the material from the supernova itself was now hitting these clouds surrounding the star, which was sort of creating this relatively bright glow visible from far away. But then, just like that, after about 100 days, it suddenly just disappeared. And lastly, following the explosion, there was a clear detection of stable nickel and not radioactive nickel. This too suggested that this was some sort of a core collapse supernova as predicted by the model. And since the observations definitely matched the original theory, it's only natural for us to assume that this was indeed a type 3 supernova, the third type that we've never really officially confirmed. But it's really important that we've been able to confirm this one, mostly because several other stars, such as the famous Aldebaran or Myra stars, are also expected to create this type of a supernova. On top of this, the extremely famous but still somewhat mysterious Crab Nebula slash Crab Pulsar that's right there in the middle, for many years now have also been sort of assumed to be created by a type 3 supernova. It's never really been officially proven, mostly because we've never really seen the progenitor star, and also because it's been like a thousand years since the supernova happened, but overall it's always been sort of one of the theories. Mostly because of the chemical composition of the nebula that was left behind. And also, interestingly, based on some of the ancient records from nearly a thousand years ago that describe this particular explosion, or this particular new star, as they um, referred to it back then, appeared to have been visible in the daytime for roughly around three weeks. And this, of course, suggested that something unusual was happening here, while then being visible at night for about two years. All of this did suggest very similar patterns. At the same time, as the nebula expands, it seems to create these very unusual filamental structures, as if the original supernova was now hitting a lot of the clouds from the original star that were slowly released over time. All in all, of course, suggesting that this too could have been that type 3 supernova as well. But for now, all we know is that they do seem to exist, and chances are we're going to be finding more of them in the next few decades as well, simply because now we kind of know what to look for. And so this is definitely a really exciting discovery and a really exciting confirmation of a theory that's pretty much like 40 years old now. And I'm sure a lot of new studies will be coming out in the next few years, possibly even identifying some other supernova that we might have missed that might also fit the same pattern. For now though, well, check out the paper in the description below. 
We will definitely be coming back and talking about this in some of the future videos and share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.